the first two parts of this video, we're going to be having two days worth of fossil hunting, where me and Shay will be looking at different beaches and seeing what we can find. Then in the third part of the video, our dad is preparing an ichthyosaur paddle. It's going to be an absolutely jam-packed episode. Let's get straight into it. Come out fossil hunting today, meeting Shay in a little bit as well. We've both gone to two different places and we're meeting up towards the end. Hopefully we find something pretty good. If we don't, we've got a couple of nice fossils to show you at the end of the video. I hope you enjoy it. Just when you thought there couldn't be anything much safer than walking along a path, there's been this massive piece of sandstone that's fallen out and rolled onto the path. Looks like it's come from right up there. Would have been pretty terrifying if you were walking along and that started rolling towards you. Always got to be careful when there's cliffs. Finally made it down to the beach. Gonna have a look along the pebbles now and have a look for some fossils. We'll have a look together and see if we can spot any as I'm walking along. It's a little ammonite imprint on the top of that rock. It's not quite what we're looking for though. Another ammonite imprint on this big nodule. It's been an ammonite over there and complete one there. Squashed, but it's got a layer of shale over the top of it. So underneath the shale, probably be a complete specimen, albeit very crushed. There's a rock there which is full of little ammonites. There's also some fossilised wood in the same shot. There's the fossilised wood. And this block here is filled with little ammonites. Right, let's get this nodule opened up. I've just chipped this piece off. See a little ammonite right there and underneath it's filled with really nice ammonites. So these ammonites will be going through the entire rock all the way along. I think I'm glad I took the risk and decided to break this extra piece off because the ammonites on this part are even better preserved than those. There's a lot more complete ammonites. So these are just all the imprints as well as a few complete ammonites. And this block is just absolutely crazy filled with ammonites. That really is something special. Never, never really found anything like that before. Well, we found a few nice little fossils there. The block filled with ammonites was really nice. Other than that, there's not been too many, not really many complete fossils. We're gonna head further up the beach, have a look along there, see how Shay's getting on as well, and hopefully he's found something. And we've still got some exciting fossils to show you at home at the end of the video. Oh, there's a beautiful ammonite in that shot. Can you see where that one is? Right here. Really nice example. Looks pretty nice. We're now going to meet up with Shay and see what nodules he's found. I've also found a couple more along the way and we're going to be opening them up. Here's one of the nodules I found, which has an ammonite inside. Let's start by opening this first one. Yeah, 
It opened absolutely incredibly. That is stunning. That's so piratized. <laughs> oh, and there's some little ones next to it. Don't get much better than that. Definitely not. Goes back together perfectly. Here's another nodule which I managed to find. That. Another nice one. It's been a very lucky day. Next up, we're going to show you that incredible fossil fish, as well as a really pyritic ichthyosaur vertebra, which Shea had found on this fossil hunt. It's covered in pyrite it's really really unusual all these little bumps all bits of iron pyrite also known as fool's gold it looks pretty dull at the moment but eventually when we prepare it it'll presumably look pretty golden a couple of ribs on the back of it as well it's hard to even recognize it as a bone it's just covered in so much of the pyrite really heavy heavy piece and time for the best fossil of the video and one of the best fossils we've found to date. So here's a look at this Lepidotus fish. This is without a doubt one of our favourite fossilised fish, one of the most complete and one of the most aesthetically pleasing that we have found. There has been some preparation work undertaken on this specimen already, but there is still much more preparation to go to get the finished result. It's a partial specimen, it's not entirely complete, but what we do have is a really good quality, articulated, partial Lepidotus fish from the Jurassic. It's incredible just how all of the scales interlock. Considering this fish is over 180 million years old, the fact it's still got all of the shine of the enamel of the scales present is also pretty remarkable. It goes without saying that preparing a fossil fish like this is very difficult. A fish of this quality is a dream find. That's a pretty detailed look at the fossilised fish. I think you can see why it's one of our favourite fossils. That's the end of the first day of fossil hunting. What a jam-packed episode. Now let's move on to day two. The first thing we're going to do is come across to these shale slabs and see what fossils there are to be found. The sea has opened up a number of these slabs and you can see already a huge deathbed of pyritic Jurassic shells. It's really nice just walking along and seeing these fossils totally exposed. They're really fragile and the sea will eventually wash them all away however. I've got some wood down here. Nice plank of it, almost looks like a row of vertebrae. It's a big plank of wood and with it, quite a few balamnites washed up next to it. A little bit of a shell as well. So all of these little balamnite guards, which are the squid-like creatures. Four of them there on shore, probably a few more that have been there and worn off. Can you spot the fossil? Here it is. Big squashed, what's probably a Harposterus ammonite. Covered in little pyrite clusters. Even though this ammonite is squashed flat, it's still really nice to see this type of fossil laid in the shale to have a look at as you're walking along. 
Unfortunately, the majority of this type of fossil will be inevitably washed away by the sea quite quickly, but it's still nice to see them. You can see another nice big nodule covered in golden fossils down there. This one's got loads of ammonites preserved on the top of it, as well as fossil shells, all piratized nicely. So far, not found a single ammonite to open up. I'm sure there'll be one around somewhere. Or perhaps where Shea's looking, he might have found a few. Large bellum knight, much bigger than the ones that were washed against the wood. Very eroded and not complete. The very tip of the like the sharp bit of the Bellum Knight Guard is completely worn away. There's another pretty, pretty nice fossil squid. Again, quite worn, although the tip is preserved. That's not a bad size. Our biggest Bellum Knights are about a foot long. So our other Bellum Knight, it's about this long. So maybe when I get home, the fossil I'll show at the end of the video today is one of our biggest bellum knights. Probably fits well with what the theme of this video so far has been. We never know, Shea might have found something else. I'm gonna go around now and meet up with him, see if he's had any luck. Not much around here at all, apart from the squids. Looks like a big ammonite, big partial one. Well, that's been massive. Gosh. Similar to that little one we saw squashed in the shale, the little one with pyrite clusters on it. This is another big harposterus. Pretty 3D this time, although only half preserved. sack full of ammonites hopefully they all split open pretty well i've got a half decent hildoceros ammonite which i'll try and split on video as well for you too i've got a rock that i'm gonna set the camera up and i'll try and split a few for you safety first so i've got some extra safe safety goggles i'll try and reveal this hildoceros first quite a lot of the outer world's missing but we'll see what's there and if anything's preserved Okay, so it's actually come out really nice. It's uh, quite piratized, so it's it's covered in fool, a layer of fool's gold. All the center's still there, so we could actually remove the outer world to have a perfect center. As you can see, we've got plenty of nodules. We've got quite a few different shapes and sizes, actually. We've got this big one here that could have two ammonites in, hopefully. A long, thin one. We've got plenty where you can see the ammonites running around the outside. This one should split nice. I mean, you can use a chisel, but I'm just gonna use the uh, thinner end of my hammer.
Okay, so you can see the outer edge of the ammonite there. The rest is still covered in rock. We'll have to take that one home and prepare it with the tools. This nodule's got an ammonite in just there, but it's very, very rotten. It looks a little bit like a sea sponge. See the little holes where things have burrowed into the nodule. It's still pretty complete. Found a little fragma cone in a nodule there. That's the, the very end of a bellum night. So the squid would have come out the, uh, the end of that. A few bellum nights here. There's some nice big ammonites washed next to them. So I've split all those now, it's, it's pouring down. I'm gonna head back around to meet up with my brother and hopefully he's found some good stuff. Here's the key pile. This is what I'll be putting in my bag and carrying up. Back home now and I've got the really big bellum night to show you, as I mentioned earlier in the video. Usually the Bellum Knights are only about this big, so quite a lot smaller, just like the ones we saw on the beach. So to get one this big really is the find of a lifetime. We've only had one or two this size. The other one we've got is a similar size, but a different species. So we're very lucky to have both of these. What an absolutely incredible fossil Bellum Knight. Next up, we're going to be watching some fossil preparation of a large articulated ichthyosaur paddle. Let's have a look at it. Here's a video of us preparing an ichthyosaur paddle, or also called a flipper. Each ichthyosaur would have four of these, and this is one of the front paddles. This is what an ichthyosaur looked like. It's a large marine reptile. Looks a bit like a dolphin, however they aren't actually related and the age of the specimen we're preparing is about 180 million years old from the lower Jurassic. I'll just draw on here the actual part of the creature which we are going to be preparing. It's a pretty big paddle and it was found in quite a few pieces and we've managed to start piecing it together and in this video we'll show the rest of the process of piecing it together as well as preparing it. Pretty unique video, we've not really made a video like this before, but if people do enjoy preparation videos, we can make some more in the future as well. Let's have a look at the paddle now as it stands before we start to prepare it, and then we'll get into having a look at the piecing together of the paddle and start removing the rock from it to expose the bones underneath. Here's a look at the paddle so far. A few tool marks where we've remove some of the shale already. Other than that, there's a f quite a thin film of shale covering all the bones still. So the bones will look a lot nicer when we remove all of that. There's also quite a few more digits to attach to make the paddle or flipper probably around this length. A few of the digits are loose, a few of them are clumped together. So we'll reconstruct it. It's quite a difficult process. You have to refer to like books and things to make sure it's like anatomically correct. 
but it's definitely something we'll be able to do and then we will remove all this stone as well so quite a lot of work to get on with but the finished products will be really good and we will be something very nice to add to our collection the first thing for us to do is to start to assemble it we've managed to get it into three pretty large pieces which can all be glued together and then there's also extra loose digits which we can piece back on as well you can make out the shape of some of the bones however as you can see they're all covered in a thin layer of rock and this is something that we will be removing later in the video The places that we are gluing the extra digits on are the places where they were actually found when they were fossilised. We could take them and glue them in different places to make it as anatomically correct as possible. We felt to leave it as natural as we could. The paddle itself is also pretty well articulated in any case. If it was a total scattering of bones, then we could maybe piece it together correctly however it's quite nice just to leave it naturally like this the exact way it was preserved There's a few more loose digits to glue back in place. Then we also have some pieces of shale with bigger paddle digits in, which we will remove from the shale and then glue on. After that, the paddle will be glued together, all the bones that we have. We can start to begin to remove the rock away from the bones. We've managed to free the rest of the bones from the shale. We'll piece the paddle together so you can see how it looks now we've got all of the bones glued back in place. And then we can remove the shale from the bones. We've already started on part of it, but we can continue more of it as well so you can have a look. We're going to use air abrasives to 
to remove the thin layer of shale from the bones, the air abrasive will blast out tiny little particles, a little bit like sand, and very carefully remove away this thin layer of shale. It's a very time consuming process. We'll show some footage of us doing it now and then we'll get on with the rest of it over the next few days and then we'll show you what the finished fossil looks like. Here's the paddle before we did a lot more abrasive work to it. I've got a few other little clips to show and then we'll have a look at the final paddle, the finished result. It took quite a few more hours of work to get the piece actually finished. It was definitely worth the effort and time and it's one of our favourite pieces in our collection by far. Here's the finished ichthyosaur paddle, perfectly revealed. All of that thin layer of shale has now been completely removed and we've protected a lot of the bones with a thin coating. The bone quality is pretty exceptional. All the bones are preserved fully 3D, most of them still in place. Although the paddle isn't complete, it's still pretty near complete, just missing a bit of the back of the paddle and of course the limb bone which would have attached. This is by far the biggest paddle specimen that we have. We're incredibly pleased and proud to have it. It's taken many many years of fossil hunting before we've come across something quite as impressive as this. It was a brilliant day finding it. Every single nodule here contains an ammonite fossil. They range from large to small ammonites and also different species. The majority of nodules here will open up really well. You can never guarantee which ones will, however these have the best chance. If you'd like a selection of ammonites to open up yourself at home, please contact us on our Instagram page, yorkshire.fossils, or alternatively visit our official website, yorkshirefossils.net, for both ammonites to open yourself, as well as fully prepared specimens. And if you do get some, I really hope you enjoy opening them, and thanks in advance for supporting what we do. That's the end of our third episode within this video. We've had two really good fossil hunts and an awesome fossil preparation video. Thank you for watching and we will see you in the next one.